Our next speaker is Jonathan Tong from York University, who will talk to us on the impact of radial distortions in VR headsets on perceived surface land. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you for the invitation to speak here today. So I'm just going to jump right into it. So um, modern virtual reality head-mounted displays make use of powerful optics to focus the display that's placed mere centimeters from the observer's face. And this has the effect of making the uh, objects that were, are being shown to be at a greater distance from the viewer. Um, but an un un unintended consequence of these high magnification lenses is that it's um, non-uniform in its power of magnification over the image. So what we get is a curvature distortion, um, specifically a pincushion type distortion in the image. And this can be modeled uh, with a simple radial distortion equation. So this is an extra simplified version, which it just uses a cubic term here. And essentially what it's telling you is that the original uh, image points um, are remapped radially outwards depending on uh, the initial uh, radial distance from the image center, in, in which case uh, here it's aligned with the optical axis as well. Um, so this is the simplest form of distortion that we can model. Um, and in order to correct for this kind of distortion in headsets, uh, typically what developers do is they use the inverse, inverse version of this distortion called barrel distortion. And it's just, uh, rather than um, a mapping of points in the image outwards, it's a mapping of uh, points inwards towards the image center, as shown by these concentric circles here. And of course, this, this process isn't perfect. It's based on approximations, and so uh, there's going to be some residual distortion. And so today I'm going to talk about what are the perceptual implications of such residual distortion in the image. And first, before I go on, I should talk about how we actually quantify uh, distortion in an image. So we can look at the undistorted uh, image length, the diagonal, and compare that to the distorted image length, diagonal image length. And the reason why we, we use the diagonal here is because uh, that the corners are where we expect to see the most distortion. Okay, so essentially uh, to quantify distortion, we could just calculate a percentage. It's just the difference between the undistorted length of the image and the distorted length of the image as a percentage of the undistorted length. Pretty straightforward. So, so far I've just been showing that um, this, these pincushion distortions cause curvature in the two-dimensional image that we see. But for uh, 3D stereoscopic displays, we have both left and right eye images to account for. So the idea is, how is this affecting our, how is this pincushion distortion affecting our 3D perception of space? So let's just take, for example, um, a case in which we, let's just reduce the, um, the situation to one dimension. So say there's a line that's placed ahead of your focal plane, and it's slanted um, top away. So what do the left and right eye images look like? They look something like this. And we have, as we move up the vertical axis of the image, we have uh, an increasing horizontal disparity. And it is approximately linear. But when we introduce pincushion distortion, we get this curvature. And now I'm showing how the horizontal disparity will change as a function of the vertical position now when we introduce that distortion. So uh, here in the x-axis, I'm showing the vertical position in the image, and then I'm plotting on the y-axis the horizontal disparity that we get. And open points are the undistorted image, and uh, the black points are the distorted image. You can see that there's the curvature there, and it's uh, nonlinear. Um, Fun, uh, his horizontal disparity is a nonlinear function of the vertical position. And what this ultimately amounts to perceptually is a, a curvature, a convex uh, direction of curvature of the image surface so that slants near the top are overestimated and slants near the bottom of the image are underestimated. What about uh, the monocular cues to slant. So 
uh, things like uh, linear perspective and um, texture gradients. So if we imagine now, instead of just a one-dimensional object, it's a two-dimensional object, like a ladder or uh, train tracks, and once again, it's tilted top away from the observer, what we expect to see is that these regular uh, texture elements decrease in size, in their apparent size, as you go off into the distance. And how does pincushion uh, distortion affect this? It adds curvature to the lines, and now there's no longer a linear, monotonically increasing or decreasing uh, element size as we move up the vertical axis of the image, as shown here in this graph. And uh, ultimately what this produces is a apparent curvature in the image, um, but in the opposite direction as in the slide I've shown before. So now it's a, a concave curvature. So what we predict to see then, uh, due to the warping of these cues, is that in the top we have uh, what appears to be slant in the opposite direction. And in the bottom, there should be an overestimation of slant. And in the middle, uh, slant should be perceived more or less uh, as, as it's shown. So I, I've shown you two different kinds of cues that produce uh, opposite uh, biases, right? So we have the stereoscopic cues that uh, create a convex type of curvature, and then the mon monocular cues that create a concave type of curvature. So which is it that the observers actually see when we show them distorted uh, surfaces in the VR headset? So in order to test this, we had observers viewing uh, surfaces within a VR headset, and we had them do a, a slant estimation task. And what we showed them were stereoscopically presented uh, images of surfaces with a Voronoi texture. And um, we had them judge the slant, the local slant, at uh, one of three possible locations on each trial. So either at the top of the display, the middle, or the bottom of the display. And we also randomized whether they appeared on the left or right side. And we also tested two different distortion conditions, one in which we did not correct any of the distortion in the headset. So the lenses were allowed to give the full pincushion distortion effect. And then one in which uh, we, we measured what would be the coefficient that we would need to put into the, um, the, the uh, distortion model in order to get a uh, corrected uh, image. And uh, so in that corrected image, we, we tried to get, um, try to remove as much of that distortion as we could, and then see how that affects the perception of slant. And these are the data. So here I'm plotting on the x-axis the slant angle that we presented. Um, I should also further reiterate that these are planar surfaces that are actually flat. So they're rendered to appear flat, but um, due to the distortion, there may be apparent curvature. So on the x-axis, we're showing the true slant angle, on the y-axis, um, I'm showing their mean estimate for that slant angle. And the dotted line represents perfect performance, uh, meaning no bias. It's a hypothetical situation. And then here, the three different colors represent um, when we were asking the observers to judge the slant either in the bottom, that's in the blue, the middle, the red, uh, red points, or in the top, which is the green points. And you could see that when we ask them to estimate the slant in the top portion of the display, they're consistently, sorry, in the bottom portion of the display, they're consistently overestimating the amount of slant that they see. And when we show, when we ask them to uh, report the amount of slant seen in the top portion of the display, they tend to underestimate the amount of slant. And uh, when we ask them to judge the slant in the middle, they are also overestimating. However, in the corrected condition, many of these biases uh, are, are mitigated. So um, there's actually no significant difference between the y-intercepts of these lines uh, from zero in the corrected condition. However, in the uncorrected condition, these y-intercepts uh, vary from zero significantly. You'll also notice that there's a change in the slope of these performance curves 
uh, in the corrected versus the uncorrected conditions. And this suggests that there may be a change in sensitivity to changes in slant um, between corrected and uncorrected images. Okay, moving ahead. So um, we wanted to look at what, uh, so, so to, to recap, we found that um, when observers were viewing these distorted images in the headset, that surfaces were seen to have a concave curvature, which is consistent with the warping of monocular texture cues. But uh, we wanted to see whether, if we were to show a, a smaller patch of the surface, uh, whether people would be able to actually integrate over that surface curvature and actually um, get back the, the true slant of the image. And so we uh, showed a smaller surface patch, which is about five degrees uh, visual angle. And then we, had, we did uh, a similar slant estimation task in which they adjusted um, the tilt of a line to match the slant that they saw. So they're imagining that this is the uh, side profile view of the surface that they're looking at. Um, this time we did it in a Wheatstone stereoscope, a modified Wheatstone stereoscope, so that we could control for uh, the other factors that are present in head-mounted display. So things like defocus blurring, a mono, uh, the chromatic aberration. We wanted to get rid of all of that and just uh, simply isolate the geometric distortions. And so we did this task in a Wheatstone stereoscope and we tested three different distortion conditions, um, a barrel distortion condition and a pincushion distortion condition, both with 5% strength. And these are the results that we found. On the x-axis, I'm showing the slant angles that we presented to the subject. On the y-axis were their mean uh, slant estimates. Once again, the dotted line is the hypothetical situation in which uh, they have perfect performance. You can see right off the bat that for the barrel distortion condition in red um, and the pincushion distortion condition in blue, they were consistently underestimating the overall slant of these surface patches. In the green condition, the non-distorted condition, uh, they were sometimes underestimating, sometimes overestimating slightly. And overall, um, when taken together, there was no net bias in their perception of uh, surface slant. Um, we also fit uh, their performance curves with um, a line and, and um, did a linear regression and showed that there is a difference, a significant difference between the slopes um, in the barrel distorted condition and the pincushion dis distorted condition relative to the non-distorted condition. And once again, I want to reiterate that this is uh, suggestive of um, an effect on the, the sensitivity to changes in, in slant. But to test this more, um, more rigorously, we decided to do a discrimination task. So in the third experiment that I'm going to be covering today, uh, we did a slant discrimination task with distortion. And how this works is first we show a fixation cross. This was done on the uh, Wheatstone stereoscope, by the way. Uh, first we showed a fixation cross for 750 milliseconds. Then either the reference or comparison stimulus. The reference was always at 15 degrees and was always non-distorted. And uh, the ordering of which one came first um, was randomized. And in between, we had a mask um, and this was, this 200 millisecond mask was just to get rid of uh, the possibility of um, a uh, apparent motion signal um, when, when we switch from one frame to the next. And then we asked the question, which one was perceived to be more slanted overall, uh, the first one or the second one that they saw? Now, uh, we had five different distortion conditions in which the comparison stimulus was either not distorted or uh, distorted with different levels of barrel distortion or pincushion distortion. So we had a high version, which was 5%, and low versions, which was 1% distortion. And we were interested in measuring uh, two different type of measurements. One is the bias, um, or the point of subjective equality, and that is essentially what is the comparison stimulus, the comparison slant that needed to be shown um, that, that was indistinguishable from the uh, from the reference of 15 degrees. 
And our sensitivity measurement is the just noticeable dif difference or what is the amount of change that we have to make in the comparison slant um, in order for observers to realize that there's a difference in the slant from 15 degrees. And this is what the data look like. On the x-axis, I'm showing the different distortion conditions. Um, and I'm plotting here for the PSEs. You can see that there's an elevation in the point of subjective equality, meaning that we had to make the comparison slant higher um, in order for it to be perceived uh, as the same as the non-distorted 15 degree um, slant, meaning that there's an actual underestimation of slant uh, in, for the comparison stimulus when we introduce distortion. And this was significantly different from the non-distorted condition in the uh, high pincushion distortion condition. And um, as we expected, uh, we have evidence that uh, this distortion also causes uh, decreased sensitivity to changes in slant. And this is shown by a elevation in the just noticeable difference for uh, the both, both the high pincushion and high barrel distortion conditions relative to the non-distorted condition. And now just to summarize the results, uh, overall, the presence of pincushion distortion due to HMB optics um, causes local surface slant to, uh, to appear uh, to be biased in a way that's consistent with uh, a concave, uh, apparent concave surface curvature, which is induced by the warping of monocular texture cues. And uh, average surface slant is underestimated in the presence of either type of distortion, whether we're talking about barrel or pincushion distortion. Uh, relative to the non-distorted condition. And this effect is stronger for pincushion distortions than it is for barrel distortions. And the perception of average surface slant is less precise and underestimated when as little as 5% uh, pincushion distortion is present. However, there are no measurable effects when uh, at the level of 1% distortion for either uh, pincushion or barrel distortion. And in conclusion, um, you might ask, what kind of impact does this have on uh, use case scenarios in VR? Well, residual distortion might affect uh, the way that users interact with surfaces, right? So you can think of a number of uh, very common ways we interact with surfaces in real or virtual environments. And given that I've shown you that people are less accurate and uh, less sensitive to changes in slant when there's distortion, you might imagine uh, effects on performance. Um, so these, these effects can be mit mitigated through precise lens-specific distortion correction. And uh, I just want to end off on a note saying that um, we have found that these effects even persist when uh, the observer or the world is in motion. Um, so these, are, these have real implications for um, actual VR use case scenarios. Um, and I want to end off by saying thank you to our funding sources. Thank you very much.